Now let's begin our conversation with Senator Barack Obama. Thank you so much, Janine, and, and uh, thanks to Neil for helping to organize this. Uh, thanks to all of you for taking the time to be here on this important issue. And uh, I would be uh, remiss if I didn't acknowledge uh, that I've got a field organizer who's responsible for rural outreach. Uh, Rohan, come out and peek your, peek your head in front of everybody. So Rohan Patel, some of you have been in contact with him. We've been having rural summits all across the state of Iowa, and so I hope some of you have had a chance uh, to meet him. It is good to be back in Ames, and it's good to be with the League of Rural Voters. You bring together the voices of millions of Americans from all across rural America, and you do great work in making sure these voices are heard in state capitals and in our nation's capital. And it's about time that your voices were heard, because for far too long, you've had to listen to politicians tell you one thing on the campaign trail, and then tell you something else once they close the doors in Washington and start making rural policy. You're sending your message, but sometimes you can't get through because the lobbyist is already tying up the phone line. Well, it's about time for Washington to start listening to rural voters. Because when you get out into the heartland and talk to people, you are reminded that there's a lot that America can learn from rural America. I'm reminded of my grandparents who came from Kansas and brought their rural values west to Hawaii where they helped to raise me. When I travel across Iowa, I see so many of their qualities in the people who I meet in small towns and on family farms. I see my grandfather's openness. I see my grandmother's honesty. I see my mother's kindness. I'm also reminded of my home state of Illinois, of sprawling cornfields, open roads, small towns like Sparta and Pickneyville. And when I talk to so many folks in similar communities across America, I see those rural values that have done so much to define Iowa and to define Illinois and to define the American story. Hard work and innovation. Rugged independence joined with a belief in community that says, I am my brother's keeper. I am my sister's keeper. These are American values. They're values that are worth fighting for. They're values that I intend to fight for as President of the United States. And they are values at the core of the agenda, real leadership for rural America that I pre presented in Fairfax earlier this month. Now that leadership starts with one simple principle, listening to rural Americans. That's how we put together our agenda. We held rural sum summits in Adel and Tama and my Rural Steering Committee held 32 roundtable discussions across Iowa. We heard about what matters to people in their daily lives, and we listened carefully to their ideas. Because if you want to find out what's going on in rural America, the last people you should be talking to are a bunch of lobbyists in Washington. If you want to find out what rural America needs, you need to get out and talk to real Americans, not the special interests that all too often work against them. And that's why I'm not taking a dime from Washington lobbyists in my campaign. You have to talk to farmers. There you go. They agree, too. You have to talk to farmers and small business women. You have to talk to school teachers and small town doctors. And that's why the Washington insiders I listened to when I wrote my plan were the residents of Washington County, Iowa not the agribusiness lobbyists in Washington, D.C. Now, the times are too important to keep shutting rural Americans out. We're at a turning point. Our economy is in transition. Our environment faces growing peril. Our communities are changing with the times. Young people in America, in small towns, don't know if they can make a good living and achieve their dreams without moving far away from home. That's what you hear when you get out and you talk to people. And that's not a future that I accept. I believe that this moment of peril is also a moment of great promise. Because when it comes to the challenges facing our communities and our country, rural America is not the problem. It is part of the answer. It's time that Washington learned some history. It's time that we remembered 
that this country grew from the toil, the sweat, and the ingenuity of generations of rural Americans. It's time that we remember that rural communities feed this nation and fuel our growth. It's time we recognize that no one is more ready to compete and no one is more ready to innovate. No, mo no one is more ready to lead this country into the 21st century than rural America. Now make no mistake, no one works harder for their dreams than rural Americans. The simple dreams of making a good living and raising a healthy family and having a secure retirement and leaving their children a future of opportunity. Those are dreams that are familiar to all Americans. But for far too long, Washington has not been working for working people. While big corporations get tax breaks, the cost of the American dream is going up for the American people. Instead of representing those rural values, that sense of a common trust and a common stake in one another, we get the politics of division and we get the politics that serves the interests of the few. It's time to change that. That's why I'll sign universal health care into law not 20 years from now or 10 years from now, but during my first term in office. That's why I'll pass. <laughs> That's why I'll pass a tax cut that will reach almost every working American while eliminating the income tax altogether for all seniors making under $50,000. Those are issues that affect all Americans, but it's just a start of what rural America needs. Because if Washington continues policies that work against family farmers, our communities will fall further behind and so will America. But if we reject the politics that shut ordinary folks out while letting the lobbyists in, then we can create a new story for rural America. We need to show young people that they can live their dreams without living home, leaving home. No child in America should grow up thinking that they have to move away to achieve their dreams. No child should have to grow up in a community devastated by teacher shortages or nurse shortages. No child should think that their hometown is not a part of the next chapter of the American story. 